am I? You sure you want to know? We haven't even met yet. One's missing. How did this asshole get out? Genetic super spider builds drunken web. I guess the researchers are working on that one. Because that's what they do when they remove spiders. Instead of taking the little glass box thing that they're in for easy transport, they scoop them out with a mason jar and then go do research on them. Parker, let's do it. Um, fucking genetically enhanced spider bit my fucking hand. I know where your missing spider is. You think maybe I should get medic- Oh, f*** it. Helpful Science Museum screen gives tidy rundown of the powers Peter Parker will now receive. Also, Sony product placement in a Sony movie. Come on, guys, stop double dipping. Guy who will soon become an accidental supervillain conveniently already working on supervillainy things prior to the transformation. Violence, aggression, and insanity. You diagnosed insanity in a rat? Norman. The general gave the go-ahead to Quest Aerospace to build a prototype of their exoskeleton design. Because that's what we normally do in situations like this, tell you exactly where your money is going if you fail, and who you can get revenge on later. I'm already on my ass, mate. When the plant's senior electrician is laid off after, after 35 years, what else would you call it? Holy clunky exposition, Batman. Funhouse mirror Tobey Maguire. Guy who will soon become an accidental superhero, conveniently already making drawings and doodles of superhero-y things. Large, alarming spider bite was not on Peter's right hand when he came home, conveniently disguised so that his aunt and uncle couldn't see it, I guess. Also, these symptoms waited all day to manifest until Peter got home. Combining the genetic information from all- Convenient audio flashback handholds the audience through the complicated fact that Peter's bite from a super spider is affecting him. You know, Norman Osborn may be a genius, but he's still like, 50 years behind Stanley Tucci's scientist from Captain America in the area of super soldier serum research. Let me reschedule. With a proper medical staff and a volunteer. I mean, if you just give me two weeks. It takes two weeks to get that kind of staff? That's just long enough to be pointless. Scientist running out of time and funding tests his theories on himself cliche. Wait, was that one of the abilities the helpful screen told us about? Does I see amazing vision on this list? But I guess you can't have a superhero with glasses or contacts, that would just be stupid. Stalking. There's no black Mustang in front of this bus in this shot, but in the next shot, somehow one arrives ahead of the bus. Dr. Strom is dead. They found his body this morning in the lab. Unfortunately, billion dollar defense contractor Oscorp has no cameras or site sign in security features to determine who might have been at the lab at the time of Dr. Strom's death. Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliche. Mary Jane just happens to slip right in front of Peter so we can see some of his new abilities. Also, everything that lands on this tray just sticks there without bouncing or obeying any of the laws of motion, because spider powers can also change scientific principles. Nobody fucking notices this. All the authorities in this school are all outside smoking right now, apparently. Before Peter punches Flash, the crowd circle is completely closed in around him. But when he punches him, Flash goes flying, there's an instantaneous large gap for him to fly through. But, in all honesty, Harry and MJ should be smashed like bowling pins. Rubber Peter. Sony saved approximately $2,000 by reusing the same POV shot over the laundry alley twice within seven seconds. Nobody f***ing notices this! Amateur wrestling ad offers the right amount of money that Peter needs to buy a shitty car. Peter webs the Dr. Pepper can, and then the lamp, and then there's a knock on the door. Hello, Aunt May, and now there's webs all over the fucking place for some reason? Aunt May should totally have been able to see all these webs right here. Also, that lamp he just destroyed is back on the shelf, somehow. You start fights at school, we I don't know. I didn't start that fight. Did Peter get in trouble for that fight? I don't recall any teachers or authority figures within a 10 mile radius of that fight. I guess all that happened off screen, but on screen, no one gave a shit. And I know I'm not your father. Then stop pretending to be. You're not my father, cliche. Shady Wrestling League only uses verbal consent instead of actual legal signed consent. That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? That's racist. Jesus, really? They actually want to murder people with these things? I would also point out that this wrestling bigwig guy should totally remember and recognize Peter once Spider-Man hits the news, but again, they didn't take his signature or even his name, so... Robert decides the amateur wrestling operation. That's where I'll make my score. What the hell's the matter with you? You let him go! Cop reprimands citizen for not doing cop's job. Stay back! My uncle! Petty thief randomly shoots and kills Uncle Ben out of all the people in New York City. Just a question, are there any superhero movies where the hero's parents or guardians don't die? Car crash head on into a steel gate does nothing to hurt the driver. The robber lost his gun here. That's why he pulled out this stupid knife. But then when Peter kicks him, he suddenly has a gun again. Also, this must have surprised him too, because he doesn't even use it on Spider-Man with a clear shot. The police, who were right on this f***er's tail when he arrived at this abandoned building, take forever to find him, allowing Peter to have his revenge. Peter remembers this wrong. Bullshit pipe causes Thief to trip and fall through a window so that morally, Spider-Man gets his vengeance but didn't straight up kill a guy. The NYPD called on a cop boat to help take down one asshole. Nobody bothered to call Aunt May during all this? My father got the place in New York, so we're all set this fall. Odd choice of words, aren't you already in New York? 
Or are you doing that Martin Scorsese thing in Quiz Show where Queens is not New York? Unwanted touch in this shot, but not so touchy-feely in the next shot. This article copy-pastes eight lines of the story from the left column to the right, because no one at Sony had time to write more than a total of 15 lines for the fake news article. Also, Sean Young? Wasn't it John Young in the last article? NYPD fired their spokesperson over this Spider-Man shit? Damn. He stinks, and I don't like him. Average, everyday YouTube commenter. He's leaving notes now? What is he, Iron Monkey? We sold out four printings. Dude trying to convince obvious bottom line motivated guy the front page story is good waits until the very end to drop his best piece of evidence. All so we in the audience get to spend a few more seconds in the ADHD funhouse that is J. Jonah Jameson's newspaper office. Did you always short six dollars? Even though Mary Jane left the diner quite a while ago and was out of sight, her asshole boss somehow expected to see her standing out here and give this embarrassing ultimatum in front of Peter. Hey, you tell me who she is. Norman plays the pronoun game so that Peter has to ask who the hell he's talking about. Peter gives away his identity with a series of photographs so good, so varied, and so up close and personal that even a child would know that only Spider-Man himself could have taken them. Geez, a movie with this much CGI can't bother to remove the ING Lion logos from the Oscorp building? After the World Unity Festival. World Unity Festival. Let's hear it for Macy Gray! See, this is what happens when you book a music act for your movie immediately after their debut single, but before actually waiting to see if they'll be a long-lasting star or just fade back into musical obscurity. I mean, honestly, at this point, Macy Gray is probably more well-known for being in this movie than for that Try to Say Goodbye and I Choke song, right? Peter starts taking pictures for no reason at all and somehow lands on Harry and Mary Jane. Then Harry spots Peter in the crowd below? That's some sinful bullshit right there. I know he's getting revenge on the Oscorp people, but is he so mad that he'll potentially bomb his son, too? Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliche. What's the bigger sin? The terrible aim of the high-tech next-gen glider and its pilot, or the fact that no random citizens were harmed during this machine gun chase? Subway bandits strike again? Where was Spider-Man during that shit? You should know I'm crazy about it. It's just, you know, you never made a move. Bro code violation in all 50 states, fucker. I guess Peter's spidey sense just took a day off, didn't it? Who's the photographer who takes the pictures of Spider-Man? So Peter gets money for taking pictures of Spider-Man, but he's not credited in the paper for taking them? You're an amazing creature, Spider-Man. Geez, we're only in the first movie and the villain is already trying to team up with someone. Or we could destroy, cause the deaths of countless innocents and selfish battle again and again and again until we're both dead. Or you could just kill Spider-Man now. Green Goblin allows time for Spider-Man to think about teaming up rather than demanding an answer now, which would make the decision to kill him a lot easier should he say no. They said I needed acting lessons. Urge to make snarky remark so strong right now. 1975 New York City decides to assault Mary Jane. Mary Jane isn't some kind of danger cliche. Whoa, this suddenly turned into the best movie ever. Seriously? No time for the mask at all? Also, wait a minute, he clearly had the mask on when he was on the rooftops a minute ago. I guess he lost it? Masks are always just slipping off people's faces these days. Look, maybe it's an alley so dark that you can't see faces. Maybe it's not. All I know is there appear to be a lot of street lamps on around here, and MJ should totally see Peter's face right now. Man, he managed to put that mask on more quickly than he lost it. You have a knack for getting in trouble. <laughs> Mary Jane doesn't recognize Spider-Man's obvious Peter Parker voice. Scene does not contain an upside-down lap dance. My baby's in there. Okay, so what were the responsible adults who were watching the baby doing when the building caught fire? Special effects are special. Did this need to be a surprise? Why didn't Green Goblin just fly around the city and throw a bomb or two to draw Spider-Man out? Also, this must be the only thing happening in New York City right now. Green Goblin took a risk that the Subway Bandits wouldn't be striking again at this hour. It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Wrong answer! Oh my god, what the hell is this? Green Goblin threw a bomb earlier that turned people into skeletons. Not to mention those other really effective, just plain explody bombs he threw before that. But now in a cramped space, Goblin throws this bull. Look, I'm sorry, Peter should have caught the blood drop, and probably could have done it too. Does he need both hands and both feet to stick to this ceiling? Probably not. As it is, the blood drops to the floor, Norman hears it, and now we're supposed to swallow the fact that Peter ran across the ceiling, out the window, and underneath the balcony without making one noise. Green Goblin failed to remove Spider-Man's mask earlier in the film when he kidnapped him so that we could enjoy this scene of realization finally kicking in. And also to add about 20 minutes to the total runtime. Those eyes! Those horrible yellow eyes! Aunt May says just enough before Peter is thrown out to give him all the info he needs. You're not Superman, you know. DC Comics. Mary Jane is in some kind of danger cliché. Let die the woman you love, or suffer the little children. We interrupt the Spider-Man movie to bring you the hero has to choose moment from Batman Forever. We're gonna bring the box right on 
what do you? Most convenient barge in the history of barges. Well, that took forever. Also, Green Goblin wastes everyone's time, including the audience's, by not having some bombs ready for this scenario. Oh, bullshit already. She's not Spider-Man, right? Someone has amazing timing and aim to hit the goblin underneath the bridge like this. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! New Yorkers band together in a crisis cliche. F***ing finally. Ow, okay. One more bomb, right? One more bomb. Oh, f***, you're gonna monologue now, aren't you? Spider-Man suddenly shows strength that he did not show through this entire fight because Green Goblin threatened MJ. Villain's arm thrusts through the rubble and or nuclear waste cliche. As we watch Goblin summon his glider into this mess, I start wondering, where is that sleeping potion he used earlier? Fuck, that was a good weapon. Godspeed, Spider-Man. Dude, this is like the millionth time you've opened your mouth and let Spider-Man live. Oh. Even though Goblin's glider was clearly shown to have been within inches of his face, he's still allowed to say, oh, for laughs before the glider warps back into the screen. Norman Osborn just happens to get buried in the same cemetery as Ben Parker. Right, because you recognize the kiss, but not the voice. That completely makes sense. Computer salesman, computer engineer, computer analyst. My lord, even the computers need analysts these days. Oh, they have the internet on computers now. Tommy. How's the peeping? Tommy. How's the peeping? Donald Redberry shot himself in 1980. Charles Boyer, 1978. Pills again. Charles Butterworth, 1946, I think. In a car, supposedly. It was an accident, but, you know, he was distraught. Dorothy Dandridge, Pills, 1965. Albert Decker, 1968. He hung himself. He wrote his suicide note and lipstick on his stomach. Oh. He is the one. Master's my friend. You don't have any friends. Nobody likes you. How strange. There's nobody here. Bit of a slob, isn't he? All brilliant men are. <laughs> <laughs>